Machine Weekend 2016, the Invitational semifinal match. That's right. We this, have. No, say it. Brent's, Who do we have? We've got uh, Brent Simon with his Lilith 3 list. Yep, and he's facing off against Jake Van Meter with a Thagrosh 1 list that if you tuned in for the Iron Gauntlet streams uh, yesterday you or the day before, no, it was yesterday, I think, when Jake Van Meter played. I don't know. It's all blurring together. It's, it's been got, such a yeah. crazy weekend. By the way, I'm Will Schick. This is Ed Burrell. We're going to be your commentator crew for this uh, fantastic matchup on Legion vs. Legion action. We're going to see some Hellmouth on Hellmouth, uh, sweet, sweet fighting. It's going to be exciting. we got Hell two mouthed. Hellmouths in one. Yeah, Hellmouth. That's going to be a thing today. <laughs> our uh, scenario today is going to be extraction. And there's our players right there hanging out, getting ready to go. There comes the signal. We're going to see the handshake here. Handshake. Nope. They're just they're just having a good time. Just, they're shake, just having a good time. Shake his oh, hand. Oh, here we go. Here shake we go. It. Oh, they're not they're not even gonna they're not even gonna shake hands. They're these guys are so in the zone right now. They're they're done. They're done. All right. Well. So here so here goes deployment. Let's get to that scenario real quick, just so you can see what's going on. We got extraction here. Uh, so you're looking for five CPs or Warcast or Warlock assassination. You score those CPs by controlling. A flag or dominating a flag. You can see the flags on the center line there. You can also destroy the enemy objective once per game, obviously, to gain one CP as well. Killbox is in effect, so you got to watch out for that, or otherwise you're going to give away some free CPs if you keep your caster out of the action. And for lists, um, Brent is uh, running Lilith, Reckoning of Everblight, a.k.a. Lilith 3. Um, in her battle group, we've got a Succubus, a Carnivian, Seraph, Typhon, a Naga Night Lurker, and a Nephilim Bolt Thrower. Um, they're supported by a pair of Forsaken, mm -hmm. a pair of Shepherds, a pair of Strider Deathstalkers, <laughs> and then he finishes off with a single Hellmouth. Yep, so very much a, a kind of a traditional little three list, wants to shoot the crap out of you on her feet turn, uh, make life miserable as she stationaries all your stuff. Uh, going against that, Jake's got a Thagrosh one list. Like I said, you might have seen this before on the previous live streams for the Iron Gauntlet. It's Thagrosh, the uh, Prophet of Everblight. So you've got Typhon, Proteus, Carnivian, uh, Sacral Vault, Spawning vessel with full complement of uh, pot pot handlers, a two hellmouths, a two spell martyrs, a shepherd, and a gobber chef. Now that gobber chef, you got to watch out for because in one of Jake's games yesterday, he actually managed to kill Imperatus with it. So nice. if you think that it's just there to to throw in more bodies to the pot, it is not. It also can mess up your face with its butcher knife. You can see here, uh, Jake's finished his uh, initial deployment. There's a little bit of rock music for y'all. Yep, it's going back to it, just because. I don't really know why, but there you go. Well, you know, we paid for it. We might things as well are, use things it. Things are happening. Things are happening. Uh, it's a very exciting pre-deployment phase or deployment phase here. Oh, apparently you can't hear the music, so I'm just crazy. Good. Uh, it's That's perfect. Losing I'm our just minds. talking about music. <laughs> Thanks, Lyle. <laughs> Good job. Get Tony back on. You were terrible at this. Uh. But no quarter is beautiful as ever. As, Thank yep, you, Lyle. It is. And uh, be, sure to, be sure to start picking up no quarter because you've got Grind coming up really soon. Hungerford's not here to rep that, but I've played a bunch of games of Grind Mark III in the office, and it's been a blast. I have my own team that's sitting on my table getting ready to get painted when I get back from this uh, fantastic con. I am excited for Grind, and it looks like we are up with Jake Van Meter's first turn. Just advanced deployment. We're not quite there yet. Those hell mouths need to be placed. Jake Van Meter's first. All right, yes, advanced Jake Van Meter's deployment. first. There you go. There you go. Nope. Uh, we got a little I bit. Just, of I just thought AD that to go here. Brett did a really horrible job at ADing. He's his, just like all in the corner stuff. behind the woods. You can't here. touch me now. I have a plan. You will never kill these models. I mean, it's fair. You, you could swing around and flank. I don't <clears> necessarily <throat> know that that's the flank you want them on, though. During their activation, I'm going to move them back to the far corner of the mat onto the Hordes logo. <laughs> <laughs> this is my logo. Stay they, away from this logo. They will live to tell the story of this battle. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, that would probably guarantee it for sure. So yeah, it, it, overall, it's like a, it's an interesting matchup here because you've got you've got two very small lists, right? They're they're mm -hmm. condensed with a lot of heavy models. Lilith's feet not as effective here simply because stationary can't affect a lot of the stuff overall in Jake's list. Like he can force a bunch of shaking to happen right. against the war beast. But they, it's not it's not an infantry driven or, um, you know, there's there's just not a lot or like multi wound infantry specifically driven list. So really, the stationary comes in to knock down defenses on your active turn to try to get more shots in. Um, but you know, again, you got low defense mostly on the side. You know, you're looking at 11 and 12s by and large on Jake's side of the table for the big stuff. 
So it just comes down to maybe hitting Fagarosh and, and filling him full of arrows at the end. I do enjoy that we're seeing Typhon and Typhon action. Um, that might be fun to see, you know, a six-headed battle royale between the between the two beasts. And uh, yeah, I'm I'm really interested to see who's going to come out on top. One of the things I really like about this matchup is that I think both lists are strong, but both lists counter what the other list wants to do to some extent. And so it's going to come down to player skill. I think this one really for me comes down to who just plays the better game, capitalizes on their opponent's bad dice, um, and can mitigate their own you know bad luck as well. And those are always the games I think that are the most fun to watch overall because you're really seeing the true testament of the players playing against each other rather than trying to mitigate from the outset an uphill battle or climb. So Jake is done with all of his Hellmouth deployment shenanigans. Clearly with Will Schick on the job now, it's not going to be the clown show that was Hungerford oh, and I. No, we'll get there. We'll get there. I was enjoying all of your uh, musical renditions. I think we should keep that up for sure. All right. Make a best of soundtrack from War Machine Weekend. 2016. I'm sure there's a blooper reel out there somewhere from all of our shenanigans. Oh, Tony mm. has been collecting blackmail material on us for years now. It's all out in the public, so at least from the live stream. Well, the live stream, yeah, there's no, there's no stopping that from going. So, you know, one of the things that we saw Jake do, and I expect to see him again, you see the three tentacles up there that he deployed in kind of a straight line right next to the Carnivian? Yes. First activation, that Carnivian's going to come up, he's going to spray those tentacles and murder them all. And you'd be like, why is he going to do that? Well, he's going to do it for two reasons. One, it's going to give uh, three souls to the Sacra Vault, and then it's going to give three corpse tokens to the spawning vessel, which will allow him to immediately jump out a lesser war beast. And those tentacles just come back, you know, one at a time, but they right. do come back. <clears throat> so the tentacles are, it's a really interesting it's a the resource. Way, yeah, the way he uses them is really interesting because not only are they, are they a dangerous resource, but in the first turn, they're basically resources for the rest of his army to be able to do the things they want to do. And it costs him almost nothing, right? So um, expect to see that play here. It's, it's really clever. It drives Hungerford mad, which makes me love it more. <laughs> um, he just, you know, he hates the fact that uh, the tentacles have souls. But, I mean, they have a mind of their own. They're doing their own thing. They're not just controlled by a giant, you know, terror mouth in the center. Yeah, I mean, what's just, you know... He works on those rules. It's true. I mean, so. you saw what was coming. Um, I think my favorite moment from Jake's last game we saw stream, there's the handshake, yeah, there's and the handshake. now they're ready to get this thing underway. Uh, so we see a roll. This is going to be for the Sacral Vault's uh, soul ability. It is called, what is it nowadays, Crypt of Souls? Yes, Crypt of Souls. So if it doesn't start with soul tokens, it gets to roll a D3. He got two souls. Here comes that Carnivian. Checking its spray, so we'll see the Carnivian advance probably. There it goes. Perhaps Jake Van Meter did not bring his own spray template. Perhaps <laughs> he's borrowing. He's just Brent's. not ready. He's maybe he, maybe Brent's just <coughs> looks cooler, you know. See a quick measurement there, just checking things out. He's got to make sure he's he knows what the threat ranges are on things. <laughs> there we go. So he's gonna go ahead and assault. I, yeah, he's assaulting here, so. Was the rat four shots against the tentacles. And then he's going to go bite some tentacles. And all three of the tentacles are now dead. And three souls and three corpses go in the pot. So there you go. Opening move from Jake Van Meter. Solid one to get everything uh, fueled up and powered and ready to go for this game. I feel like that's just good use of your resources. It is. It is. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just smart play, right? You know, some people wouldn't see those interactions and how they work. Um, Jake is a tried and true Legion guy, and he... You know, you can tell he practices a lot with the list that he uses. Then he can also see those, you know, those inherent, how do I maximize what I'm bringing to the table? And again, because the Hellmouth slowly replenishes its tentacles, it really costs him nothing. Right. So there's zero reason not to do it. Um, in olden days, before pre-Hellmouth, you would have seen uh, those poor pot bears stabbing each other in the back on the first turn to do basically the same thing. Um, but now he can maintain those resources. Here comes a Shredder. Boop. From the uh, Viscera of the Chef Blight RD soup that he just made. Dang. Yeah, it's like <laughs> I did this before. <laughs> <laughs> All right, another measurement. Now, of course, Jake knows what the Hellmouth can do, um, so he's very aware of the danger that it poses and how difficult the Hellmouth is to get rid of because of Impervious Flash. So we see the Spell Martyr kind of advancing up, getting within range. Um, to maybe be channeled through by Thagrosh. 
We've seen obliterate, perhaps. Sounds like. And yep, looks like Thagrosh is going now. He's going to cast an obliterate, boost the attack roll, boost damage roll. He's only going to get two dice on this. It does not get an 11. He needs to kill it, but he does do some damage to it. And it looks like the AoE 5 is going to clip one of those tentacles as well. Not that it's really going to matter too much. Because one die on the blast damage is just not going to crack. Not so much. No, <coughs> no, 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 no. Hellmouth is very difficult to remove at arm 18. And arm 15 on the tentacles. So Stegrush, did, they, did you see Stegrush advance? Yeah, he, he, he advanced mos up. moseyed forward. Mm, not sure if we'll... S I mean, Fog of War kind of irrelevant in this uh, matchup with right. a bunch of eyeless side on the other side. So we're probably not going to see that one put up at all. So he's just going to sit on two. A little surprised. Uh, he's got a token on him. Maybe he did put a fog of war. All right. So, <laughs> so, so Typhon thra uh, tramples forward and then puts up Probably excessive healing on himself here. Oh, he's actually just going to murder some more tentacles. So he buys an attack after the trample. <laughs> and he misses on his own tentacle. He buys another attack on the tentacle. He hits and destroys a tentacle. So one more corpse and soul token, it looks like. Yeah, that's right. Just, you know, fueling things up. And uh, I think he, I think Typen did excessive healing himself as well, because there's a token next to him. Okay. So, we saw in Jake's last Iron Gauntlet stream game how effective excessive healing can be at stopping Typen from dying. Uh, took a full charge from Viros too with all of his focus and managed to live through it. Accommodation of bad dice rolls and good dice rolls on Jake's side as well, obviously, but totally changed the tenor of that game. So we had Jake's Hellmouth. Um Yep, spawn gonna another go tentacle and murder some tentacles. Dude. <coughs> yeah, so another strong play here where you can place the tentacles after they're destroyed. Um, the one that you get and then kind of rejigger it around to where you need it. Now we've got some sweet tentacle on tentacle action. It's like sloppy, wet spaghetti noodle fight. That is uh, appetizing as heck. Mm -hmm. It's almost I lunchtime. Know, I know you love it. Proteus advances forward. And we see the Shepherd and Gobber Chef run, and that's gonna be Jake's turn. So quick, efficient, and uh, overall mostly just a resource a resource farming turn for Jake. Yep. <coughs> I'm curious to see what happens here because I believe that Jake he didn't kill the tentacle, which is which is great. So there's no replacement. He tied up two of them with his own tentacle. Um, his own two tentacles, I guess. And then the last tentacle doesn't look like it's gonna be within charge range of either of Jake's heavy war beasts. So he's in a pretty solid position having mitigated the danger that those things uh, really could cause him at this turn. Hear a lot of sures on the table right now, I think. Sure. 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 Now, did Jake not activate his far hellmouth? No, he, well, he sort of did and didn't. He, uh, he didn't, it looks like he didn't choose to put the tentacle back on, but it did activate and, you know, did nothing. I think Jake even mentioned he forgot to put the tentacle out when he when he did activate it. But you know, Hellmouth with no uh, no tentacle, its activation is pretty simple. So Spellmarter gets shot to wait. Uh, Strider Deathstalker looks like it advanced up. Yep. I think it shot the other Spellmarter maybe. No, I missed it. Well, one thing I, I did not mention was that. Brent's objective is the bunker. Uh, as is uh, Jake Van Meter's, actually. So it's bunker on bunker action. So one point goes straight onto the Hellmouth from the Death Strider Deathstalker just because of the sniper rule. So if you can't crack arm, just go ahead and plink it to death with points. Of course, that'll take a while. <laughs> Probably <coughs> longer than you really want it to, given the eight boxes of damage the Hellmouth has.
So uh, Brent talking about wind wall a little bit and how it doesn't really matter too much against Jake's army because the Sacrovolt is a magical attack, which ignores wind wall. Uh, Jake, you saw pointing to the Carnivian and Typhon saying, guns. I've got guns. I got guns. Yes, you do, Jake, and they're both they're on your arms, sir. You are a <laughs> Look beefy at those man. Guns. They are huge. <clears throat> Brought to you by Daco. Do you even lift, bro? The answer is yes. Yes, he does. All right, so Lilith advances forward. Just going to go ahead and take some shots at some tentacles. So hits. And that tentacle is going to get one die. Is he going to boost? Rolls the one and does enough on a six to kill it. Easy enough. Just needed a four on one die. And that's going to trigger Blood Moon, which is going to allow him to cast Windwall for free. So... Even though Brent was kind of joking about how it wouldn't really come into play, you might as well cast it if it's free. Like I said, it does prevent some of the sprays. Mm -hmm. Carnavian's no joke. So no damage on the Hellmouth with the second shot. I believe Lil still has one shot left to go if she's got anything in range. And then she'll get to reposition. Oh, he cast Battle Host with Blood Moon, excuse me. That's a much better play. This is why Brent is, you know, here and I'm not. <laughs> Battlehost grants plus two inches of movement to Lilith's battle group, as well as giving her plus two arm if a war beast in her battle group is within three inches of her. Uh, great spell. All right, so that's going to end Lilith's turn, it looks like. Now it's going to be war beast time. Maybe. More Brent's going to think about this. He's going to pull out the laser. He's trying to figure out how to get rid of that other tentacle and free up his own, his own hell mouth to do some stuff. Definitely possible with those Death Striders. Death Stalkers. Death Stalkers. Whatever. <coughs> Strider, Strider Death Stalkers. Death. There we go. I had most of the words, just not in the right order. Stalker Death Strider. Stalker Death Strider Striders stuff. All right. So another tentacle goes down to Sniper. Swift Hunter could snap. Er, and also got the other tentacle that's engaged, too, it looks yeah. like. So actually, Swift Hunter back. <laughs> We're going to see these tentacles jumping forward. We're just out of range here. Let's see. So no. So that tentacle is running. Staying out of melee of Proteus, it looks like. Other tentacle running. This tentacle is just, as Brent put it, dying for the cause here. Hellmouth can always <coughs> make more. It's got so oh, many tentacles right. under there. It's a tentacle factory. All right. Wolf chose not to reposition after making her shots. She's just facing down that sacker vault. I'm on a huge base, too. What you going to do? There's a Carnivian behind it. Yep. <laughs> the Carnivian just stealthily hiding from our camera behind the sacker vault. Typhon gets up there. Doesn't look like he gets totally in the trench. Hmm. It's pretty close. Let's see if he puts uh Nope. Does not put up excessive healing, it looks like. Naga Night Lurker. Jets forward. Quick measurement here. Michael Chili Winners has just done his annual delivery of the giant stack of pizzas. For to all the, the invitational uh, folks. the invitational folks, yeah. Yeah. Bolt thrower runs. And looks like we got a shepherd left to go. Got a Carnivian. Got a couple Forsaken. Plenty of things on Brent's side that still need to decide what they're doing. So you can see all the pre measurements of threat distances on those tentacles. Neither neither player really wanting to give their opponent an easy kill here. Brent 
going to, I'm not sure which model that one is. Is that the, oh, I can't even tell from this angle. It's something on a large base. What would that be? Come on, Ed, tell that's me. That's Carnivian. No, 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 the other one. The Typhon? The, the base that's up by Lilith, right there. What's that one? You got Typhon, you got the Carnivian, they've moved. There's Seraph. A, there's a Seraph, all right. <coughs> there we go. So the Seraph is being proxied right now or flying really high in the air because its wings uh, can cause some issues <coughs> when you're that close to Lilith. All right. Getting within the wind wall protection. So Succubi moves up. And she just kind of advances forward. All right, so with that, Brent's turns over, goes back to Jake. Jake goes ahead and leeches in all of his fury. One of the really cool things about Thagrosh nowadays is his Authank ability in the new editions, where he just gets his fury back. Right. Regardless. <coughs> He's like a warlock warcaster. It's amazing. I like, kill all my beasts. I don't care. One, I can bring one of them back with my feet. And two, I still get to do all the stuff I want to do. So that's some quick measurements. Jake's still really wanting to remove the threat of the Hellmouth. In the tank, mm -hmm. thinking about things, full of wonder. You, you've impressed me, um, considering that I'm the one with War Room up on Brent's army, going through some Alilis <laughs> abilities, basically verbatim as I'm reading them, <clears throat> uh, as you're saying them. Um, you've got a lot of familiarity with these two armies. I, I do enjoy my Legion quite a bit. I was a little, actually, uh, Jake's other list is Fianna too, who you know just pre-released here at the show. I was really hoping we could see Jake run Fianna too, because I wanted him to teach me a few things about her, because I really love that model. Um, but watching Jake, and watching any of these invitational players play and how they how they approach their list right. construction and stuff, it just gives you ideas. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want to like, I don't know that his list is particularly perfect for me, but I like seeing how he approaches what they can do, um, how he approaches things on the table, and then taking that and applying it to my own stuff. Like, it's a lot of fun to watch these guys and see their innovation, right? Like, right. I probably would have never come up with, I should murder my own Hellmouth tentacles because then I can fuel everything in my army. I would have felt well, bad for the tentacles. If Hungerford and the development team didn't See, think now, of it, right? Like, now, all I'm going to do is, uh, is I'm just going to, I'm just going to do it all the time now in front of Hungerford because I know it enrages him. Our next staff steamroller tournament, this is my list. Nice. I'm just, all the Hellmouths and I'm just, the only point of the list is to murder as many tentacles as I can. So all of a sudden we see uh, one of the best proxy bases ever come out. It's a Diablo 3 uh, CD or Diablo 1 CD. Uh, just popping out there to be a, uh, to be a sweet proxy base. Class. As, uh, Classy. Classic CDs have the same, you know, same diameter as uh, Is that exact? huge bases. Yeah. Wow. yeah. We, we used to use AOL. Don't you remember using AOL CDs yeah, and playtest play all the time? Back when we were playtesting Colossals and Battle Engines, we just got a sweet stack of AOL CDs, and we're like, yeah, let's do this. <laughs> it's my first Kator gun carriage on an AOL CD. Gave me 120 minutes of free internets. So Jake's still very much in the tank here, trying to consider his options, what he needs to do. Obviously, both these lists are kind of built to want the Alpha Strike. Thagrosh can definitely do some better attrition peace trading thanks to his feet which allows him to bring back a heavy war beast I've seen Jake use that to great effect um, <coughs> and sacrificing Proteus to you know go up on scenario and stuff so Carnavian's actually advancing here looks like he's going to try to get rid of that Strider Deathstalker with a uh, sweet 10 inch spray so boost the spray flame on needs an 11 and that is not an 11 
So that will be uh, that will be that. Sadly for Monsieur Carnivian. And then spiny growth goes up on the Carnivian, it looks like, since a token just got placed down. It's hard to tell because there's a giant sacral vault in our way. You see kind of where he expects to place the sacral vault right now. Being only speed four, the sacral vault. Uh, you know, it's lumbering. It does its thing. All right, <coughs> so Jake moving over to Proteus now. Some more calculations. Yep. Seeing what he needs to do. All right, so something just moved. I don't know what it is because it's on Jake's hand. Uh, it looks like a, sh is that the shepherd? Oh, uh, it's a shredder. So the shredder's going to bite himself a tentacle and succeed because shredder. Mm, tentacle. He just slurped that down. <coughs> Like a little toddler. Tasty, face, tasty ground calamari. Face covered, just absolutely covered in s tentacled slime. In protein jelly. Pop moves up. Probably going to pop <coughs> out, uh, I would guess, another shredder. Yep. Since it just got its third corpse from that uh, destroyed tentacle. The Sacra Vault, unfortunately, unable to claim the soul because it is full up on five. All right, Tentacle Man. See another another Shredder pop out from the Chef Blight RD pot. Making some soup. Ploop. Oh, look at me. I'm a Shredder. All right, so Shredder's out. Jake now determining his next activation here. <coughs> Measurement of some control or some threat areas here. Jake knowing what Typhon can do. Typhon is terrifying. Let's just, let's just have a Typhon fight. Let's just put them over in their own yeah, little corner and let them, them let, them, let them duke it out, right? We just Dude. call that a... Old school style, just be like, all right, it's just champion on champion action. Whoever wins, wins the game. So, Sacra Vault advances forward. And rolls through that forest, dodging deftly between those trees. Or just <coughs> steamrolling them over. You know, as Seems more likely. As most folks are aware, if you're not or new to the stream, uh, those big battle engines, they have Pathfinder, which means they're not hindered by terrain at all. So one of their innate benefits of being so large. So shoots, uh, gets a shot, kills the Death Stalker, uses its soul to take control of the Death Stalker, and then has the Death Stalker walk over and stab a Naga in the back. <laughs> Holy cow, and that is, that's a roll right there. So boxcars, it's going to deal a healthy chunk of damage. So you can see uh, seven points, it looks like, on the Naga. Not too shabby. For not, it, not at all, honestly, when you consider that uh, that was with his own model. Right. It's like, oh, you're mine now, and uh, you're dead. Yeah, not so dead. <laughs> so Sacravault doing what Sacravault does. He remembers to get the tentacle yep. out this time from that Hellmouth. It's going to go after Lilith or just get in her way, it looks like. So basically tentacle runs, gets in Lilith's way. Other Hellmouth runs, puts out a tentacle. Tentacle runs, just getting in the way. Jamming up the works here. Uh, those tentacles, because they'll be out of command, it looks like, um, won't be able to make free strikes, but are still in the way, so, you know. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's out of eight. Um, still, you got you got a big medium base that's just jamming you in the way. You can't do anything until you kill it, or you su shimmy shimmy around it. All right, so a couple quick activations. Jake going back into the think tank here. Pretty sure that he's kind of focused on removing that other Hellmouth, because that thing is going to cause him problems if he leaves it. Um, the drag ability on that thing is just gross. 
It's a little grip ability, which allows it, when it hits a large base or smaller model, to just simply pull that model as much distance as needed towards the Hellmouth yeah. itself, allowing the Hellmouth to bite it. All right, so Proteus looks like he's going to take care of some tentacles here. Proteus has chain strike, so he's got a sweet four-inch range. Uh, hits and destroys a tentacle with its uh, with his claw. Tentacle versus tentacle. And tentacles. we see another body go in the pot. Hits, drags in the tentacle. A little <laughs> tentacle, <laughs> tentacle action here as well. Uh, and destroys the other tentacle. Proteus' his little face, his squibbly tentacles on his face have the pull ability, so if they hit a model, they can drag it in. So Proteus is like, I know what you want to do, Hellmouth. You want to you drag me? I'm going to drag you. Look at this. Just slime suckers squishing on each other and writhing around and just the gross. Typhon, try to get rid of that. It's like slug mating. Hellmouth over in the south. Yep. So we're going to see a bunch of sprays, I think, coming from Typhon. Just trying to finish it off with number of attacks here. <coughs> All right. So Typhon, Blight Breath is going to get three of these at POW 14s, which means he's going to be four off on the dice. So we'll get one. he's going to get two dice if he boosts. So boosted... Boosted attack roll actually miss. misses. Second one hits. Boost damage. Gets two dice on this. Needs a 12 to kill. Doesn't get it. So puts some damage on it. Really needs this one to kill it. Or otherwise that Hellmouth is really going to ruin his day here. Nope. Excessive healings, Typhon. And uh, simply moves the shredder up. And so you see where he placed that shredder. He's using it to block the drag, the grip action from the tentacle that's going to pop out from that Hellmouth next turn. Because obviously a model that's being pulled or pushed stops when it contacts an, ob an obstacle, an obstruction, or another model. So that shredder just got a roadblock duty. He's a speed bump in all the literal sense. Bagrosh going to... Activate it looks like and shimmy <laughs> over. Oh, Jake look at that! One of his shredders and that shredder just was so hungry it had to bite the tape measure. <laughs> gimme, gimme, gimme! Like I'm starving here. Shredder or Shepherd, Shepherd comes up. Yep. Conditions pulls off a uh, fury. So I wonder if we'll see another obliteration try on the Hellmouth from Thagrosh. I don't know if he measured out the 10 inches, but because the Hellmouth is on a hill, he would be able to see it. And he's got a lot of fury to, to spend here. You could also go for a mutagenesis, wouldn't be in range for sure. So Thagrash advances, moves over, puts excessive healing on himself. So he now has excessive healing every every time he gets damaged. As long as he's not destroyed by the damage roll, he heals D3 damage. Puts Draconic Strength on Proteus, which is another sweet, sweet spell that he has. Gives plus two strength and immunity fire. And looks like he's going to sit on... Uh, Measurement of threat ranges, making sure he's not going to get, you know, murdered, munched. <coughs> so Jake just talking to Brent right now about um, a couple of the models in his army and what he's got here in terms of offensive capabilities. Open information, obviously really important in games of War Machine. So Thagros actually sits on four. Mm, over to Brent's turn. Curious if that Carnivian that tried to spray the Naga or the Death Stalker is still in control. He probably is. It's hard to tell because you can't see him from behind his hiding place in the Sacro Vault. So Brent going into the tank a little bit. Make a few decisions, check a few measurements. <clears throat> it's 
it's interesting to see these players sort of uh, plan out their turn before they start taking any actions with the uh, ability to pre-measure and drop yeah. in some proxies. It's They can uh, <coughs> sort of test a theory, mm -hmm. adjust it, and, and you get to sort of see their critical thinking and how they might use their army even if they don't execute one of their mm -hmm. plans. Yeah, I mean, you asked me before the stream even began, you, you said, what, what's my opinion on how pre-measurement in the new editions has affected the live stream experience? And I'm like, you know, in the old, in Mark II, you just, you'd watch the players and all they'd measure was their control area, right? Or they might measure <coughs> um, contest area off of an objective or something because those were the free things you could measure. But by and large, they just kind of stood there and, and they did it all in their heads. Uh, right. And man. now, you you know, like you said, you get to watch them kind of do it on the table. And I think it's so much more fascinating and informative to see the different patterns that they're thinking of and how they're placing things and when they take them back and kind of formulate the plan in real time. So we had the... Uh, <coughs> The Seraf move over. And that was with its apparition move, so it hasn't Kay. activated right. yet. come up to uh, <coughs> hopefully take control of that flag. So it stabs the tentacle. It's base to base with the flag, so it's now it's now controlling it. So he'll Brent will score a point at the end of his turn. And uh, he animuses the uh, bolt thrower so that it gets quick work, and now he's going to take a shot at Jake's objective. So it looks like Brent's going to shoot for at least two points this turn. Um, maybe three. So it does seven damage. It's a great roll. Leaves it with eight left. Remember, destroying the objective is going to jump him up a point. The flag will give him a point, and he'll be able to score the flags on every turn. Right. And it looks like Jake doesn't have anything except maybe the shredder. Looks like they're measuring it now. Uh, in contest range of the other flag. So this could be a three-point turn for Brent, which would be massive. Laying out all of his various <laughs> measuring devices. I'm going to. It's almost like he needs it, like old time calipers or a protractor out there. Or like three paper clips and a Hot Wheel. <laughs> yeah, that'll reach. Kind of see <coughs> proxy base going. And got a tentacle there, so he's going to attack the tentacle. With the Carnivian, it looks like. So Brent trying to make sure he's outside of drag range from the other Hellmouth. Puts up a spiny growth on himself. And advances back to where that proxy base is, since Typhon's head's kind of overhanging there. See some attacks on <coughs> on that objective from Lilith. Yep. Bunker's a little tricky for ranged armies because it does drop a die against ranged and magic attacks, but right. Lilith had a POW 12, needing to do only 8 damage, like... 
Brent's got enough, I think, to, to finish off the objective this turn easy. The real concern is making sure that, you know, he doesn't open himself up to caster kill or right. a crippling, you know, <coughs> strike from counterstroke from Jake. It's like the Naga right now is going to take a shot on the objective. It hits, boost damage, does two more. So objective has six left. Naga kind of had to go out into the wind to do that. Although it is blocking the way to the bull thrower, who is doing its job holding that flag. So Brent checking his other options here for massive destruction on the bunker. Right. Looks like he's considering just having Lilith pepper it with arrows. <coughs> so Lilith activates cast Slipstream, which is the Seraph's uh, animus. So Slipstream, going to Slipstream the Slipstream the Seraph. And shoots, rat eight. Boost damage on the objective. Does no damage. Shoots again, hits, boost damage. And that'll do. So low roll followed by a spike roll, and that objective is destroyed. And that will immediately <coughs> score Brent a control point. Uh, Lilith is going to cast Spiny Growth on herself. So now checking the threat range on the Carnivian. Probably going to reposition here. Or feel must feel like he's in a good spot because he's not not taking. I'm not crazy, right? Lilith has reposition. Yeah, reposition five. Reposition okay. five. <coughs> That's what I thought, but you know, doesn't mean you're knows? not crazy. I'm yes. So and Jill or the Seraph advances over. Is going to take some shots at the Shredder that is in contest range of the flag. <coughs> Boost to hit on the Shredder. Pretty good roll there for the hit. Now the important one. This is the damage roll. Do we um do we tell our players after they've been on the live stream to change their phone unlock codes? <laughs> <laughs> not a great, not a great damage roll at all. Wow, five on three dice. Not what you want to see if you're Brent trying to get rid of that contesting shredder. And uh, I think that's it for his shots. So. Needed a 14 on that to completely erase the Shredder from existence. But uh, not going to get it there. Well, what's to prevent the Hellmouth from taking care of it? I think he wanted to I think he wanted to use the tentacle to control the flag. Right. Because, you know, lose the tentacle, I don't care. Um, <coughs> and I think the, the Death Stalker already went, right? Or am I remembering last turn? I can't remember if he's activated the Death Stalker. I can't either. <laughs> so, tentacle charges. It's likely going to attack the shredder, even though it could pull Proteus forward. But he wants to remove no charge. So no charge hits, uses grip, and yeah, it is on the shredder. He only deals three points, and the shredder gets pulled into the hellmouth. Hellmouth gets to bite now. So dice plus two. That'll do it. Hits and murders <coughs> a shredder. Explodey. He's got to have somebody that can run up there. Jake pointing out that he could just uh, use that, that Death Stalker to shoot uh, Typhon <laughs> and uh, do an auto point. And then Brent pointed out, yeah, and then he'll just heal D3, right? So seems like a seems like a good trade. <laughs> The it's the psychological games here that really matter. So, yeah, he's still got, I mean, Brent's got a couple options here to to go take that flag because he still has that 
Uh, looks like the Forsaken over there. And looks like that Strider Deathstalker has not gone yet as well. Yep, base to base the flag. Base to base, yes. So that's gonna that's gonna make this a three point turn for Brent, which is just massive when you're talking about scenario lead, because it forces Jake to basically not allow Brent to score again <laughs> on first flags, and uh, you know that that just pushes the engagement to Brent's side. He's now saying, "You got to come at me." It forces his hand. What do you want to do, right? Um, and he's kept most of his major threats out of range of Jake's army, and like we talked about at the start of the game. Neither army has a lot of, you know, grist for the mill. They're all alpha strikers. It's all really important. He, now Thagrosh can toss Typhon or Proteus or the Carnivian out, kind of as a sacrificial lamb, because he gets to bring them back. Um, but you really don't want to do that just to stop your opponent from scoring a point on your turn. That kind of exchange is not going to earn you a whole lot in the long run. Well, you might want to stop him from scoring two points on your turn. You don't have a choice, right? I mean, that's the thing, right? <coughs> At this point, you, if you're Jake, you don't have a choice. Um, the best you can hope for is to make that sacrificial lamb not only stop the point scoring, but also draw one of Brent's important pieces in for a trade that is you know, not as good for him because he doesn't have Thagrosh's feet. So it's going to be really interesting to see how Jake deals with this on, on his next turn. I mean, Jake's a, Jake's a great player. Um, but I expect that we'll see him in the tank for a little bit here because this, this is a very, very difficult um, position to be in for any player. <coughs> Down 3-0 three, three oh with your opponent in position to win the game on your turn. Because remember, you score at the end of every t every player's turn. So right. <coughs> Brent will score on Jake's turn if Brent if Jake doesn't at least contest or remove the threats. No. The Death Stalker is not going to be an issue. <coughs> no, I mean even the Bolt Thrower, by and large, is is killable. The problem is again, you know, you put that stuff out there, and then all of a sudden it's dead. Right. Like it's going <coughs> it's going to get murdered. Um. And you still have to, you know, the, the other hard part is, is that you still have to factor, okay, so let's say Jake pulls, pulls the two off the flags, manages to kill the, the Naga Night Lurker, and then scores two on his turn. Well, if he doesn't put enough around those flags to stop Brent from being able to just pull that stuff off the flags and score again on his turn, right, you have to, now Jake is playing two turns ahead. And... Again, that's that's a really difficult position to be in when you when you don't just have grist to throw into the the grinder and just be like, all right, well, I can just keep swamping you as I try to buy time right. to put you out of position or to you know kind of pull out my own plan here. Our judge Aggie making fun of a uh, Brent right, about his proxy based seraph. She's like, why don't you put that seraph on the table for once? And there's the seraph in all of its winged glory. Well, look, suddenly Lilith's army looks more formidable. Uh, doesn't it? Doesn't it just? All of a sudden you're like, whoa, there's another heavy war beast there. Who knew? All right. So we see uh, Thagrosh, Leech All His Fury, Shredder, potentially going to Frenzy, doesn't on Snake Eyes. <laughs> and... Uh, both of them passing. Jake apparently unhappy about one of them. Saw the fish shake there. So now Jake is in the tank. Blub, blub, blub. <coughs> the aquarium is just a submarine for fish. <laughs> Good old Ghostbusters. It was a solid um, new take on that movie. I liked it. Mm -hmm. No replacement for the classics, though. <coughs> they just came out with the new uh, Magnificent Seven movie, which prompted me to purchase the classic, the which I hadn't seen in a decade or more. I, I, the thing I really liked about the new Ghostbusters movie is it didn't try to be the old Ghostbusters movie. Right. It was just like, 
we're a different movie. Like, same universe, kind of, but... Yeah, it wasn't a remake. I would not call it a remake. Nor would I call it a comeback, LL Cool J. LL Cool J's been coming up a lot this weekend. And do I have LL Cool J on my phone? There is a real chance. Nope, not today. All right. So Jake is uh, <coughs> making some attacks here with his uh, tentacle. He's going to drag the bolt thrower into the hellmouth, so they'll pull him off the flag. That leaves a, uh, oh, the Naga, excuse me. So the Naga gets drugged. Naga's spirit is destroyed. Remember, it also got stabbed by the possessed uh, Strider Deathstalker. With the Naga out of the way, does that mean we're going to have a Carnivian going in? <coughs> Probably. Um, we'll see. Uh, or looks like or the uh, Sacrovault's just going to go in there and be like, I'm in the way. So he gets, looks like he's going to get three shots this turn. That's what he was rolling for. Is he close enough to contest the flag? I would have to imagine that's so. going to be tough to move. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, you know, without committing Typhon or the Carnivian in, and at that point you're basically saying, well, you're going to die. But we're going to get rid of you. And for a point when you're three up, I mean, it's worth it. Right. So shots being purchased and boosted here against the bolt thrower, I think. The bolt thrower? Yeah. So, leaves the bolt thrower Looks like with four, four left. <coughs> One more shot. Boost it. Nice hit. Now he's just got to break the arm. And the bolt thrower is going to be blowed up. Boosh. So, leaves the sacro vault with no souls, but... Um, <coughs> Leaves the uh, flag cleared now, at least for the moment. Proxy base gets picked up too. War beasts don't leave corpses on the field. No nasty scraps to get in the way these no, days. No, <coughs> you don't have to. You don't have to worry about that anymore. So Sacrovault still has a soul left on it. After all that. Oh, it got a soul. I'm sorry. It got a soul from the Nephilim. Right. Nephilim are not soulless. They're one of the few Legion War Beasts that give souls. So he blew the Nephilim. Off, Nephilim. 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 Blah, 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 blah. I'm having a stroke. I'm sorry. Give Nephil me a second. Nephilopagus? I, system reboot. Hold on. Hold on. <coughs> the Nephilim off the flag and stole its soul. Because they're the unholy union of dragon spawn and Nis. All right. Pot bearers. Apparently going to stab themselves and knock a Night Lurker. Kind of looks like here. Uh, or something. I mean, might as well. <coughs> what else they got to do with those gavs? They're going to make something. What are they going to make? I bet you it's a Shredder. I bet you it's a Shredder. Harrier. Is it a Harrier? He's got a Harrier in his hand. What would you do with a Harrier? I mean, I guess it's got flight and speed 7, so maybe he's going to put it on that flag? That'd be pretty legit. Be like, Harrier, go! Flappy, flap, flap. Uh, apparently, he's just going to murder his own pot bearers at this point. Nope, nope, he is attacking the Night Lurker. Aggie said something else, but. So, hit. Uh, he's making a bunch of swings, but not really connecting with anything. There's Those pot bearers not known for their no. melee prowess and war beast taking out. Not really. That's, that's not what they use those gaffs for. It's mostly just to pull in fresh meat. Well, he did do a couple points. I mean, you know, something. It's got one in body and five in mind. Yep, there goes the Harrier. Nope. <coughs> oh, that's no, that's a tentacle. A tentacle. Yep. Sorry, Hellmouth tentacle. Harrier's still sitting back there. Zip in there. Get in the way again, it looks like. Because it's going to be out of command for sure. So just being, an, being obnoxious like you do. 
Jake thinking about what to do next here. See the proxy base that has become Thagrosh. Thagrosh did upkeep Draconic Strength on Proteus, so he's at six right now. I don't know if the Seraph is within four of the flag. It's possible. I don't, I don't think so. All right, <coughs> interesting. So the Harrier simply goes into contest range of the flag knowing it can't score this turn, so it just stays outside of four. Smart play there. Just put as many threats as possible, like if you just saturate the flags with contesters. There's no additional incentive for Brett to try to dominate that flag on his next turn. Nope. And the important <coughs> thing to remember, too, is that casters and warlocks cannot contest. They can only score. So, for example, if that shepherd wasn't probably within four inches of the flag, there's nothing Lilith could do to stop Jake from getting a point if he was to take the flag. But because she's there, you know, no worries. Um, but that, that is, you know, it's another one of those really critical notes about scenario play is that your caster can score you points, but it can't stop your opponent from scoring points. And that, that can often lead to, in a game of attrition, that this may become. So what happens if you have nothing else on the table but two casters and they're both on the same flag? Whoever was <coughs> up by one is going <laughs> to win. win. Because, yeah. Because they you're, just score you're gonna every score, turn. You're going to <coughs> score and then 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 score. And it's just going to alternate. And so whoever scores first wins. And that's assuming that your caster just gets to go in and murder the other caster. Right. But it just assumes they're standing there like... Having, yeah. having coffee. Right. Just They're just like, let's just hang out by this flag. Let's parlay. <laughs> oh, crap. Get there early, kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A score advantage is such a big deal when you're when you're playing scenario that, it, you know, because it just it forces your opponent to react. And anytime you can make your opponent react to what you're doing, you have an advantage. So we had Proteus come up and eat a Hellmouth. Yep. Yeah, he was just like, oh, you make tentacles? I've got a lot of tentacles, buddy. Let me show you. And he just sucked him out of the ground like spaghetti. Wet noodle spaghetti. Now I'm just picturing somebody sucking spaghetti out of the ground. Yeah, yeah. But spaghetti with teeth is real gross. But it's even worse than that because it's like you're sucking spaghetti with spaghetti. Because that's what Proteus has in his mouth. It's just like a bunch of like squibbly tentacles, just like. <laughs> Ugh, it's gross. I don't even want to eat that pizza anymore with that in my mind. It's horrifying. So Carnivian is going to just saunter on up, get within four of the flag as well. Spiny Growth himself. Makes, and he is now going to be out of control area on Thagrush. So if Thagrush doesn't shift over. He may go crazy next turn. But I don't think that Thagrosh is going to hang out where he is right now. I expect that we're going to see Thagrosh kind of right. readjust <coughs> towards the battle line at this point. So measurements on the Carnivian's threat. Thagrosh advances over, expected. Puts all of his war beasts in his control. Keeps the Carnivian out of threat, outside of its sprays, of course. Tag rush model back on the table. And we're going to see him spend some fury to do something, I'm sure. I would at least excessive healing himself. So excessive healing goes up, leaves him with four. Probably doesn't put anything else up on this turn. He's got... Got three on Typhon right now, which I think was the fish shake. That <laughs> when Typhon didn't frenzy, it meant that uh, he couldn't dump the fury. Right. Given that Typhon doesn't really look like he has a lot of things to do this turn. So Typhon's just going to advance, take the flag. Not going to be able to excessive heal, though. So this is that, I mean, here comes the peace trade thing we're talking about. He's going to. 
Did Typhon get in base contact with that flag? Uh, it doesn't look like it. I don't think he did. Maybe it wasn't his intention. But no, there's definitely a gap there. So doing some spray attacks, dealing some damage. Excessive heals himself. So the Typhon now full up on Fury again. Shredder just going to go get in the way. There's more where that came from. There absolutely is. Please tell me I didn't just get the hiccups on the live stream. <laughs> <laughs> I've had them all weekend. <laughs> well, maybe if you weren't downing vodka out of your, uh, that's gin for you. If you weren't just downing straight gin out of your uh, mercenary cup. Or is that a Crick's no, mug? No, that's a Crick's cup. Uh, Crick's mug. It's been more of a Canadian maple whiskey kind of weekend. It's because there's so <coughs> many Canadians I around know. here. They've been, they've been just staging their own like overtake of War Machine Weekend. Well, for a little while I was thinking St. Louis might be in Canada, and I remembered it was in Wisconsin. You'd think it would at this point, we with are. the number of Canucks. But the Canadian Revolution is real, man, and it's happening right now. It's also not in Canada. Sorry, I'm yelling at my producer. He doesn't know where Wisconsin is, clearly. That's true, because that's where we are. I mean, St. Louis, he, Wisconsin. He, he's from Wisconsin. Yes. He's from ch the cheese state. It shows. Doesn't it, though? You can see him like just painted up like a Green Bay Packer with a cheese wedge on his head, <coughs> screaming about how Favre was the greatest. <laughs> uh, that's my right. story. I'm sticking to it. St. Louis, Wisconsin. So we see some shimmying here um, on Brett's initial turn. So Jake, Jake finished his turn. He's contesting the flags with just about everything in his army at this point. <laughs> um, he's, you know. If anyone wants a vintage 3XL abomination shirt, come find me at the front desk. You've kind of seen a, uh, you know, I think you saw about the best play that you can make in this situation given the tools that Jake had. He cleared the flags. He's trapped up the Night Lurker really well um, on his side of the table. He'll be able to kill it next turn if he needs to with the Hellmouth. He's put enough high box stuff in contesting of the flags that I don't think Brent has the resources to answer all of it. And he hasn't, I don't think, given away anything yet that, you know, will cripple him in the following turn. So I think he still has a pretty strong counterstroke next turn. Kind of depends on what Brent's dice do, though. If they spike, it could kind of ruin the plans. Um, but now Brent really has to decide, you know, what do I want to get rid of? He's, I, I would, I, I don't know. Uh, it depends on his ranges. I don't, I mean, he's got some way to move that Carnivian back up top. Well, he still has Slipstream. Um, he doesn't have a <coughs> Hellmouth anymore, so there's no more grip shenanigans that you have to worry about when you're Jake. You do have to worry about the grip shenanigans on Jake's side, though, because Jake still has both Hellmouths. Mm -hmm. One which is centrally located and one which is right by the flag that you're trying to get to. Thagrosh isn't in your danger zone at this point. Danger zone! So, yeah, I... The yeah. I would concentrate on that upper flag, I believe. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, at this point, the, <coughs> the southern flag is probably not, not really dealable at this point dealable with <laughs> yeah you can't you can't dealt with it deal with the bull as Kenny Rogers would say you got to know when to hold them you got to know when to fold them you got to know when to walk away and you got to know when to Hungerford that's right I mean Hungerfording is rare but when you need to do it you got to do it I Hungerforded so. this morning did you <laughs> yeah wow coffee does it to me every time <laughs> <laughs> it is a diuretic all right, so Lilith, uh, Lilith moves. She casts Slipstream. She moves. She Slipstreams Typhon forward. She's now going to take some shots. Pew, pew. So we see a boost. Five points on the Harrier.
And then second shot on the Harrier misses. Oof. This is not this is not the strong start that you want when you're Lilith. Right. Hits on the third, it looks like. Boost damage. It's gonna have to really spike to kill it though. Seven points to the six, which leaves the Harrier up. <coughs> so <laughs> it's got one box left. <coughs> so awesome if you're Jake, not so much if you're Brent. No Blood Boon either. Not that, I mean, just out of Frost Hammer range and Wind Wall is only sort of useful. Has to watch the kill box now. Looks like he will use his reposition. Will not use his reposition. So quick measurements on different threat ranges. Does have to be aware of kill box. He doesn't want to give Jake too easy control points. See that check again. Killbox is right on the edge of her base. Killbox is right behind her, so she's effectively like, can kind of go in tight little circles, but can't really spin great donuts. So he's gonna move to just barely be within, just outside of being completely within the kill box. <coughs> So that's going to end Lilith's turn, it looks like, because that was the reposition move. Still no feet, but doesn't really have a lot of great stuff in her 10-inch control range at this point, being right. on the corner of the board. But no, I think you're right, Ed. I, I think most of our continuing action is going to be on that flag on the north there. So I'm going to see a Typhon, Typhon charge or slam. Uh, he's going to charge the Carnivian. I'm just going to take care of it. It's going to put him within range of both the Harrier and the Carnivian. Carnivian is arm 20, though, with spiny growth. <coughs> Needs a four to hit, so it seems doable. Hits on a four. <coughs> Good enough. Why be excessive with your dice? Right, why? And no That's crit pitch. The other thing that he could be looking for here, too, is a crit so that he could throw the Carnivian, or the Carnivian away, which is probably more realistic than trying to kill it. Well, that's why I was wondering about the slam. Yeah. Right? You're still going to end up in melee range of that Harrier, mm -hmm. <coughs> and you're going to clear the flag with it. Problem might have been the angle on the slam because you have to go directly toward center to center, so that might have put him out of good positioning based on where Typhon was, but I'm not sure. But yeah, slamming is definitely an option if you're just trying to clear. So Harrier, uh, that Harrier is amazing right now. MVP has forced two attacks to <coughs> miss on it. Yeah, they just remembered that the Harrier was annoying. <laughs> Should have charged the freaking Harrier. <coughs> and so Harrier dies. Yep, annoyance is a thing. Minus one to your attack rolls. Apparently, boost for fives. Uh, I mean, honestly, fives are hard. Oof. So 14 Four. to the five. That's a good Oof. roll. <coughs> yeah. Not sure it's going to be enough, though, after the Harrier forced all those initials to miss. So that'll fill up the... Mind, it looks like. Spirit. So the spirit on the Carnivian is out. And it looks like Typhon's done. Uh, Typhon hit him. He's trying. I think uh, he's, he's trying, trying to decide to if he so boosts <coughs> boost damage or to make the other attack. Right. That's always a tough one. I mean, arm 20 with 16 boxes left, and you're only hitting at a 17, so three off. It doesn't, I don't know that it matters not, that much. Not too much. Like, o Honestly, the, the savings could simply just be on your clock. Right. Boost and move <laughs> on. <coughs> well, the other thing, too, is every, every bite you make that's successful, you're taking D3 points, which, right. you know, initially isn't much when you're fully healthy, but that stuff adds up. You know, so now Brent 
really thinking about whether he wants to make that other attack when you kind of know you can't, you cannot kill. Uh, if I have the Fury count right, and it's hard to see. I don't mm -hmm. see where he's putting his <laughs> Fury tokens. He's, he's, he's actually stacking them there, kind of right oh, under okay. that. Okay, right under the head. head. Perfectly under the head where we can't see them. <laughs> yeah, th I know he's burned through his three initials. So four more points go to the one. So it leaves him with 12 left. And he's going to take one point back from Spiny Growth. And I don't think Typhon has anything left. So, yep, it looks like Typhon's done now. Yeah. That's boosting for crit pitch might have been the... <coughs> Would have at least cleared him from the flag. Right. The thing I don't know is if the Sacra Vault got within contest range. It doesn't look like it did. Well, well I mean, it, but it's hard to say. He could be willing to commit the Carnivian there too. Yep. Yep. There's definitely ways to deal with the Sacra Vault if your dice agree with you, which you know, based on Brent's current dice, not so much. Might not want to. <laughs> might might want to be a little cautious about that because, I mean, annoyance changed the equation a little bit, but not much. <laughs> All right, so the uh, Blightedness Shepherd just simply goes into base to base with the flag. So she can control it if Brent can get rid of all of the things contesting it. Which may be both the Sacra Vault and the Carnivian. It may just be the Carnivian. Seraph does some <coughs> wacky aerobatics. Mm -hmm. So Seraph does Slipstream, advances, Slipstream is the Carnivian. Might be hoping for a. So trying to hit the shredder. Oh. <laughs> he crits, but crit misses. So no poison there. Does it again. Misses again. Oh, Brent. Oh, I'm sorry, buddy. This is. This is just, this is just this is just dice, man. Uh, they they'll do this to you. So Canavian walks into base with the uh, well into melee range with the Sacra Vaults. Takes a point from Soulstorm, one point to the seven. And in Death Shroud. The Sacra Vault is effectively arm 22 because Thagros drops strength by minus two in his command. So it does five points on the first hit. Mm. <coughs> Second one. So two more points because the claws are weaker than the bite. Buys an attack. Yeah, it doesn't buy an attack. There we go. All right. So Second third initial, attack. yep. Hits, six off. <coughs> Less than five. So five. Buys a bite. Hits. Buying another so bite. Hits. That attack, the last attack did no damage, as you saw. One more point. Oh. It's <laughs> oh getting man. down there. I think he's only got five left on it. Uh, need an eight to kill. And does destroy it. <coughs> so manages to take it out. And uh, had a, had just really nice spikes in the last of those rolls. Kind of seeing the swing balance out based on the misses and the inability to hit before, and then it coming back in force from averages on the Carnivian just spiking a bunch. 
Yeah, he <laughs> should have needed to use more fury for that. Absolutely, under Death Shroud. Carnivian's still in the way, though. Yep. He's <coughs> stopping that point from being scored and going up to four. I mean. But he needs to get up there and contest. Jake is a. Uh, Shepard moves up. Oh, no. Jake's not. So heals this air for two. And that should leave a Forsaken to go. And maybe another Forsaken. Oh, that'll be it. So it goes to Jake's turn. No points scored for Brent because the Carnivian lived. Jake's Typhon's not on that flag, and if it was, he'd have two points. He would have had two <coughs> points. He just couldn't get there, though. He did not have the distance to be able to get there in spray. So, so Proteus is going to gonna go ahead and frenzy. So that Shredder frenzies into the Seraph. Hits and does no damage because it doesn't get the boosted attack roll because it didn't charge more than three inches. Typhon frenzies, not what you want to see. Oof. <coughs> and uh, goes after Proteus. And he has to go the whole distance until contact. And hits. Oh my gosh. Ouch. That boxcars on the damage roll. I think it was actually more or than that. Uh, so it's, well, there's it's two sixes and something. I can't see what the end something is, but I was, uh, I was huge. Yeef. Typhon, why? 17, 17. <laughs> damage to the two on Proteus. <laughs> even, even Agatha, our judge, wow. is like, ow. Yeah, that is... Oh, my Lord. That, well, so it's risk management, man. So Proteus passes, even after getting schmucked by Typhon. He's like, dude, what the <laughs> oh, hell? Would have been great if he would have also frenzied a little just payback. Whacked him back. Jake's <laughs> war beasts, or character war beasts, are standing there just slapping the crap out of uh, each other on the battlefield. Proteus and Typhon got some beef going on here. <clears throat> Typhon's just like, I don't like you. I don't like your face. Oh man, that was that was just rough. So Jake now planning out his turn. He's got he's he's got a bit of work to do here because of those those frenzies. Carnivian can like kind of advance up, try to attack both. Doesn't really have the damage potential to get rid of everyone there though. So let's see what Jake's got in mind here. So he can get both beasts into melee with the Cardivian that is still contesting. So you get a murder. So, I mean, the plan is you do as much damage with the Cardivian as you can. Use the Hellmouth to drag Typhon hopefully out of Lilith's control area, which would be big. You drag the Carnivian away. And maybe with the other Hellmouth. So Thagrash activates. He did upkeep Draconic Strength on Proteus. Thagrash advances forward. Thagrash still has a feat, too. I mean, it, it can be yep. relevant at this point. Uh, we see excessive healing go on Thagrash, it looks like. Leaves him with three. And heals, heals the Carnivian for one. He's going to heal Proteus for one, because Proteus, <coughs> Proteus has his spirit out. So I see it going on here. So Proteus' body's back. So Carnivian advances, begins to attack. See a bite attack that <laughs> misses. Hits with the first swing. Dice minus two. 
It does five damage. Misses again with the claw. Ugh. Hits with the bite. Oh, three to the two. It's low rolls here. Hits. That's much better. Ten to the five. Bite again. Hits. Seven to the... Seven more, and one more attack, it looks like. So one more bite. Hits no problem. Four is going to leave him with one box left. <coughs> Jake. Jake talking about how garbage that is. Just garbage. Everything's garbage. Garbage, 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 garbage. So drags the Carnivian in with the tentacle. Doesn't kill him. Bites with the Hellmouth. Hits with the bite. That should be a Carnivian. Yep. Carnivian's dead. Attacks the Naga with the second bite, because the first bite from the Hellmouth is free. Does six damage to the one. Probably not enough to kill the Naga. I don't remember exactly how much it had left on yep, it. Nope, exactly gone. on the nose. <laughs> so Naga's now dead. Pot has two more corpses in it. So now it's just Typhon and the Blighted Mist Shepherd. So Tentacle comes out, <laughs> attacks Typhon, I assume. Misses, Misses. Typhon? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh. Even in the back. Oh, man, that's just, that's rough. That is rough. Def 13, you know, need. So I'm trying to figure out if Proteus can get to the Seraph. And it doesn't look like he's going to have the angle to get there, because that's what you're seeing with those those couple of um, measurement sticks. Is One is the four-inch chain, chain strike, and then the other one's the Typhon's charge distance. But the issue simply being that because Typhon charged base to base into... Proteus, his lane's a little gummed up. Yeah. <coughs> so now what does Proteus want to do? Proteus is just going to run, it looks like. He's got proxy base going out as he kind of plans out his move. Man, that, that tentacle missing Typhon is huge. Huge. Proteus runs just to become relevant in this game. Typhon kind of not going to be relevant anymore. And the Gobber Chef is going to get base to base <coughs> with the flag. Jake points out it's like he should have done last time. Because there was really nothing stopping him from doing it except he just didn't see it. And uh, it's going to be the pot left to go. See what they decide to do here. I'm just going to advance. My expectation is he'll kill one of them to get another corpse in, or another corpse token and pop out probably another Harrier. I mean, that Harrier did great last time. Yeah, absolutely. Might as well just throw it back out there. <coughs> yep, here we, go, here we go. Attacking one of the pot bears. Like, hey, you, you're needed. Get in the stew. Get in the stew. There comes the Harrier. Harrier's going to run. The only real question is where is it going to run to? That'll give him a tentacle, a really messed up Carnivian, and a Harrier. Have you been able to pull Typhon just, <laughs> just out? This entire, <coughs> this entire next turn for Brent would have been very different. Yes, it would. But at this point, I think that, I mean, I think Brent goes to four next turn. Unless his dice kind of abandon him like they did on the, the Harrier, Typhon, Carnivian fight. Um, anything is possible here. Anything is possible. <laughs> I mean, we've seen some, some great dice and some bad dice, and they have been batched together. So 
you, one run sees just terrible dice, and the next run sees amazing dice. So the hair skirts around the Typhon mm -hmm. and gets to within four. Really, I think the goal there was to get it behind the wall so Lilith can shoot him off the board without, you know, any issue. Back over to Brent. <coughs> it's funny to think about, like, Typhon is so far out of this game at this point, outside of just, you know, being another thing to contest that flag and right. deal with it. You almost wonder at some point, you know, if you need to rapidly reposition and you have the turn to take it, you can almost <laughs> use Thagros' feet as a teleport spell, murder one of mm -hmm. your war beasts, get, get him to where you want to be, and uh, pop him out. It loses you a turn, obviously, and it costs your feet, but, you know, stranger things have happened. At this point, though, I think Thagros is going to be using it on that poor Carnivian, because that Carnivian is not good. I almost want to make a Hungerford statement of absolute certainty that that Carnivian is not going to live this turn. But I've learned better, because Hungerford's always wrong when he says that. Learn from Hungerford's mistakes. Don't be a Hungerford. It's highly probable that that Carnivian is going to die this turn. <laughs> Hunger math is not a thing that anyone should rely on. Hunger math is terrible. So we, so we got a uh, shepherd up on the flag now. I think it's the same shepherd that was there before. Yeah. Yeah, he just moved. A just, just shifted across. over. <coughs> just to get her out of the way, so that something else maybe can come behind. It's kind of. So. Looks like we're going to blight. Yep, we're going to have a Forsaken Blight field <coughs> or use its Blight, Shroud, Blight, nice. Bomb. It's not Blight Bomb, but see if it can't just kill a Harrier. It does five points to it, to the six. How eight with three dice. That'll do on a Harrier. See if it just erases the Carnivian because it's all the dice ever. Wow. Dice minus ten with six dice. And <laughs> goodbye, Carnivian. <laughs> <laughs> yup, that's a Forsaken for you. Doing what it does. Pot gets a corpse, though. Well, there you go. Uh, six dice on a POW-8. That, that's still pretty scary. We'll get some work done. Typhon should be able to take care of that Harrier and the Tentacle pretty easily. Uh, I mean, maybe? It's probable. Although Typhon did whiff a whole bunch on the Carnivian, who's even easier to hit than the Harrier because of annoyance and bad dice rolls. So that Harrier could be as amazing as possible. Mm. We've got uh, Tony out doing a little bit of maintenance on one of our dice cams that got bumped. Dice being rolled there. Kind of missed it in the dice cam rearrangement excitement. All right. Brent considering what his next activation is going to be. He doesn't have a ton of models left. So going to try to shoot the tentacle, charge the tentacle, <coughs> checking line of sight on the tentacle. So Lilith is going to charge the tentacle, which will let her charge and then still shoot. Checking, checking um, kill box there, just to make sure that the charge doesn't take her completely within the kill box. It does not. Impact attack on the tentacle hits. Does not destroy the tentacle. So the impact attack fails to kill the tentacle, but the charge attack does kill the tentacle. <coughs> and now she's got some shots to make. So she's going to use Blood Boon to cast Frost Hammer. 
and spray the Harrier, which is legit. Uh, boost the attack to hit. Got eight boxes left, POW 12. Boost damage. And we'll do six, which leaves it with two. And now what are you going to do, Lilith? She's doing it again. <coughs> uh, she's just shooting, I think, now. Because the frost hammer is free from the blood moon now. Mm, you going to pop your feet? I mean, that's not really going to do much. Time to get Typhon over there. He's trying to figure out where he's going to shoot. So Brent's going to shoot the Hellmouth. Takes nothing. Brent lamenting he just realized that probably wasn't going to do much. <coughs> so he's got to get out of the kill box with the reposition. And that will do it. Because apparently he was completely within the, uh, the kill box. But he had the five-inch reposition. So it was a safe play. Typhon, time to get rid of that damn Hellmouth. <laughs> Typhon, <laughs> Typhon going to go eat himself a Hellmouth. <laughs> and we'll hit the Hellmouth. It does one damage. Two more damage. Live through it, Hellmouth. Be the hero we need. And it's going to force Typhon to buy. Three more will do it. So, I mean, four attacks from a Typhon, that's pretty impressive. Things will soak up the damage. Why, are you making weird noises <coughs> Why not? Your face is right there. Plus, we've been watching tentacles getting eaten all day. Lots of tentacles. So many tentacles. They've been giving souls and dropping corpses in pots. It's been amazing. And in case you don't know who we're talking to, Hungerford has showed up and stuck his nose in our little broadcast. It's what he does, man. It's I'm what he does. Watching the game. Stop. 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 Stop touching. All right. So Brent, I'm doing some quick measurements here. Just try. He's got a contest. Wants to stay outside of uh, Thagrosh's threat range. Not going to stay outside of Typhons, though. <coughs> So the uh, free strike from the Shredder actually manages to take, uh, almost take out the Spirit. So we see some shots in the Gobber Chef trying to stop him from scoring. Hits, the Gobber Chef gets blasted to death by Dragonfire. Cooked to the Chef. So now shooting Typhon, does hit. Boost damage on Typhon. Typhon's flared. Typhon takes three points to the four. And last shot, because he rolled real good, hits. Does no damage. <coughs> so did hit, but failed to crack armor. Forsaken, kind of advancing up, hoping to do the same thing as his sister did on the other side there. Shepard runs around behind the wall, and that's going to be Brent's turn. That will score him a point. He will go to four to Jake's one. So Brent in strong position yeah. to win on scenario at this point. Um, Jake needs to answer with something. Uh, he does still have Proteus up there in front of Thagrosh. He has Proteus, but I don't think Proteus has the range to get to Lilith. I mean, at this point, it, I think it's cast or kill because... Unless you can kill Typhon. If you can get Proteus up there and kill Typhon, and you're going to have a Carnivian as well, because that Carnivian's coming back. Coming we're going to see a feat this turn. Maybe, maybe he can, maybe Jake has enough bodies to, you know, jam in there and, and stop the score on Brent's turn. But I don't, I don't know. That's, I mean, that's asking a lot. That's asking a lot.
So his pot bearer makes an attack on the shepherd. Yep. Schmuxer. Goodbye, shepherd. Give me, give me that body. I like how they just hucked it conga line back into the pot. There's like whoop, 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 sploosh. All right, do it one more time. Get yourself a, uh, get yourself a lesser there, Jake. So attacking her in the back, hits, murders her, and conga line continues. Come on, ride the train and ride it. Quad City DJs for the win. Harrier pops out again. You can't keep a good Harrier down. No, you just you can't. can't. Get a fresh one every turn. They're like roaches, man. You squash one, three more pop up. They're just like, come on now. Let's that, do this. That's not exactly how the pop All right. works. So don't miss Tentacle. So the last Hellmouth drops a Tentacle in Typhon's back arc. He misses again. What? Oh, my <laughs> Lord. This is just... This is just painful. That would have been huge. Typhon would have gotten dragged to that Hellmouth, been right next to Proteus and Thagrosh, and would have just been straight murdered. Oh, wow. And that's why you boost on sixes when you can, because it's super important. <laughs> Or fives at that matter, which is what he actually needed because he had the back arc. <laughs> oh, that is just. Harrier charges in. This is brutal. All right. That'll totally eliminate that problem. Uh, nope. It's just going to deal some wounds on the Forsaken. So Forsaken is still still kicking. Oh man, I just that two tentacles in a row. The first one probably not. I mean, bad, but not nearly as bad as this one missing this time. So Jake's gonna do some measurements here. Try to come up with a plan C, maybe a D. Typhon comes in on the Harry or on the uh, Seraph. Seraph. Misses his first attack. Misses the second. <laughs> He's Typhons, man. Hits him with the fourth. So misses all three initial attacks. Manages to hit with the fourth attack. Uh, crits on the next attack. Could crit pitch. Probably. I mean, maybe pitch him towards Typhon, I guess? <coughs> or Proteus? So tosses him, four inches the away. <coughs> we'll slam him into the wall. I mean, that gives you an extra die. You could it's going to be enough to kill him, though, is the question. Looks good. Oh, good Boom. job, Typhon. <coughs> Tears him apart and hurls him into a wall to make him splat like a fly on a windshield. Very, Bloosh. very graphic. That is exactly what flies sound like when they hit my windshield. Yeah, they Those do. Washington flies are monstrous. They're huge, man. They're like pebbles. Shatter your whole windshield. All right, Shredder. Gonna go bitey bite. That that'll that'll do. That'll do, pig. Roll that for damage though. All right, so there goes that shepherd. I think that was a shepherd. What do you got left? I mean, you still got a Typhon to deal with. You got Proteus. You got a Carnavian that's yet to come out. So Proteus is just going to run. Let's try to be relevant. A Typhon has 360 degree vision, so that just means no backstrike bonuses anymore. He can't charge. So those of you who are in Mark II, he can't charge anymore that way. Um, he just can't. But he just can't take backstrike bonuses. But the so tentacle actually, wasn't in the back arc. Yeah, so the tentacle was in the back arc. So that was my bad. I, I should have remembered that. I'm a I'm a terrible, stupid individual. I blame <laughs> Hungerford. It's proximity. You're not terrible. Stop it. Oh, <laughs> stop it, War Room. Stop it. There we go. Oh. 
Too many buttons. <laughs> Maybe if you would. If I didn't just slap at it. Slapping the with iPad. Just mashing it with my paw. Just like. <laughs> All right, so Proteus runs. I believe, I mean, he, he measured the Typhon threat, so I think he stayed out of it. Right. Uh, Thagrosh advances, pops his feet. Bloop. So feet active and then immediately over. So just turn that off, Lyle. Yeah, turn it green, now turn it off. There you go. Boom. Carnavian's back. Carnavian doesn't get to attack this turn, but can still move. Just has to forfeit its action. So sure we'll see it run, probably. Uh, Thagrash puts up excessive healing on himself. I think he just healed a bunch of points for the rest of his fury. Carnivian runs, spiny gross, gets within four of the flag, and that will be turned. Okay, so despite everything, Jake is in a fair good position to hold Brent off this turn. Yes. He's removed <coughs> everything but Typhon. Typhon's not within range of anything from a charge perspective. Lilith, well, scary, I don't think has enough to answer what he's just thrown down Brent's throat. <laughs> no. <laughs> like, when all of a sudden you got a, even Proteus who, you know, took a pretty big hit from his dispute with Typhon on the other <laughs> side of the board. He's been slowly getting healed back up. You got a fresh Carnivian there, spiny growth. You got a Harrier that's fresh. I, I think... I mean, I, I think it's highly probable that Jake survives this this turn of Brent's and doesn't lose on scenario. And now Lilith is running out of board. Like, they're coming for you, girl. What you got? Because it ain't much. Mm. <coughs> the attrition game that Thagrush is so good at yep. has definitely swung back into his way. So, I mean, a series of impressive, I mean, really just impressive mental control because there are a lot of times where Jake had some roles that really could have sent you into a tizzy. <laughs> where you, just, you just start being like, I can't, I can't get Typhon. I can't drag, I can't drag his ass. Like, what is going on with my dice? And yet, you know, and then watching, uh, watching that, that 17 damage roll on your frenzy with Typhon against Proteus. It's just so many, so many moments in this game where like it would be easy as a player to kind of lose your cool and just start throwing things willy nilly at stuff. But Jake has done a really good job keeping his composure, and forcing Brent to make really hard choices and smart plays on his turn. At this point, you've got to clear Proteus, a Carnivian, a Pot Bearer, yep, and, and a, a Harrier. Harrier. Yep, yep, you do. And that is, that is what you got to do. And uh, the, <coughs> Blight, the other thing you really got to deal with is that tentacle that's currently engaging Typhon. You don't want to give that thing a free strike. No, it's got to go or Typhon is, well, it provided that tentacle can finally hit Typhon. That's true. I mean, <coughs> you, you could always just bank on the fact that, that tentacle does not want to touch Typhon because Typhon is icky. All right, so here comes a Blight Bomb from a Forsaken. That is not the same roll he had on the Carnivian. No. So it's going to do a whole lot of nothing. Kind of burned it on that super huge Carnivian Bomb. So that's one down. Got Lilith left. Brent, thinking about where to go next here. Lilith probably going to activate. So Lilith activates. She feats, because why not at this point? Yep. <coughs> and Battle Host is still upkept, so Lilith is sitting on four right now. Shoots Proteus. Hits. Proteus is now stationary. Takes one point. 
probably going to see a shot on the Harrier. Nope. Tentacle hits and destroys the tentacle. So that's going to see a blood booned uh, frost hammer. Seeing if he can maximize his hits here. So going to target Thagarosh and is going to catch looks like the Harrier and the Carnivian. Harrier gets hit with authority and does hit the Carnivian. So Harrier's going to take eight to the four from Frosthammer. Carnivian's going to take nothing. See Jake healing his Carnivian because he hadn't done that yet, but that Carnivian is fresh. <coughs> <coughs> so one, two, and one left to go. Looks like he's going to shoot the pot bearer. Yep. I don't know what he pointed to anymore. He boosted, hits. Uh, he's shooting the Harrier, it looks like. Just trying to just trying to eliminate the Harrier. He's got five left. And that will kill the Harrier. Put him back into the pot because you can't keep a good Harrier down. Pot's got two. Typhon walks in, attacks the Carnivian. Carnivian is not stationary, so he does have to actually roll to hit. Looking probably for the crit pitch like I talked about here. <coughs> Or just hoping to kill him outright. It'd be it's not impossible. It'd be tough. That's definitely not a great start on it. Two points. Spiny growth does some points back. It's gonna start to become relevant here because Jake can roll high on all of these. Seven. Seven times three is twenty one. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a good chunk out of Typhon's health. But as he's, you know, as he's boosting these damage rolls, it looks like, which you kind of need to do when you're three off and facing down spiny growth. Boosting damage, chose not to pitch him, did get a critical hit, and is choosing not to pitch. <coughs> so seven more points. And takes three damage to the one in return. See that red starting to grow on Typhon. Yep. Remember, Typhon hasn't been touched at all this game. <laughs> He's just been slapping his heads on spikes. Biting a porcupine. Pretty much. So Brent just confirming where he's at in terms of attacks here. So third initial attack, he's going to spray. He hasn't purchased any attacks yet. Hits. So hits, <laughs> yep. And does five. And now because he hit him with a spray, uh, the Carnivian will be stationary. So auto hits, no damage, or one damage. So it takes three more points to the two. Hyphen's getting real close to having uh, an aspect filled up here his mind, which won't matter because the Carnivian's stationary, but still. So, looks like he excessive heals. Calls it good. And is that the Shepherd? That's the Forsaken. Forsaken. Eats all the fury and is going to bomb. Oh, nope. I'm just going to no. eat the fury and sit on it. So, Jake weathers the turn. A bunch of his stuff is stationary, so he's going to have to shake, but <coughs> I think Lilith is dead. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, like Draconic Strength Proteus kind of says we're done here. And that, I mean, maybe, maybe the tentacle hits and drags Typhon <laughs> out of the way <laughs> so the Carnivian can go join in on the fun, but. But yeah, Brent. Brent. 
gave it his best. I, I, don't, I don't see him getting out of this, though. So pot moving, get out of the way. Got a prog. So interestingly enough, I don't know that he kept the lane open for the drag, though. So maybe Jake has a smarter plan than mine. Well, I think he's going to kill the was he shepherd. Gonna kill, he's going to kill one of them, the but I don't know that he's going to kill both. I mean, they can't. It's got to be drug direct straight Yep, straight back, towards. So. I think he's going to clip the pot anyway, but even that would be enough. And that, that attack actually fails, so the pot is not going to make anything this turn. Not that I think that's a huge problem, but I feel like the loss on the drag from the Hellmouth is a bigger deal here. Honestly, uh, what kind, how many Fury does Typhon have on him? Is he full? Um, no, Typhon's clear. Uh, Brent's, ty Brent's Typhon. Oh, Brent's Typhon? Uh, huh? I don't... Apparently going to punch Typhon with his fist. He's just going to kill Typhon here. Well, and then you can move the Carnivian up. Yeah, and then the Carnivian <coughs> can go up and kill Lilith. That's what needs to happen. There's definitely a lot of ways to do this. He's going to tentacle the Forsaken. Buys an attack on Typhon. Hits. So six damage. Remember, Draconic Strength is up, so Proteus is hitting... At real high pows. He's got 16 on the tentacles, 18s on the talons. Typhon oh, oh. murders himself a uh, forsaken and snacks on it with his squibbly tentacles to heal three. Buys an attack on Typhon. Hits. And seven points would kill Typhon. Typhon dies. Both players have their clocks under five minutes. Well, I mean, Brent's turn is going to be real easy because he's, he's got, have you know, maybe a, a he's Lilith. got a Forsaken, <coughs> a Shepherd, and Lilith to go. And here comes the Carnivian. Nothing to transfer Train to. Wrecking in. Bye bye. He's got a hit. I mean, that's not insignificant. She's deaf. What? 13? 15? 15? 15. I mean, 15 is pretty high. Um, now. Jake is going to start scoring, but he's got to move quick here. So hits, and that's and game. Smash. So Lilith gets murdered by a Carnivian. An impressive game there and an impressive win. Going 3-0 going in that third round, and then Jake managing to crawl his way back and just force Brent into a position where he, he, couldn't, he couldn't answer the attrition game, right? Yeah. He just started to lose pieces. Um, Jake... Held it, held it out, kept throwing things in. The pot was MVP, in my opinion, because it just kept, kept throwing lessers at exactly. him. Exactly. Lessers like, made from lessers. Yeah, deal with this, man. Like, we're just going to keep making stuff. Uh, and, uh, two yeah. great players. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, a great pl game. Playing a great game. Super um, fun to watch. Like I said, at the start of the game, I was really excited to see this matchup because I thought I think it all came down to skill, and we saw some really great plays, um, some really great counter plays, and in the end of the day, it was Jake's day to, to pull it out. So absolutely. fantastic to both. Stay with us. We're going to be back with the finals match for the Invitation here in just a couple of minutes so stick with us and we will catch you on the flip side hasta la vista